you, what lovely opening songs. We're very blessed to have Daniel, although he's not here, he's in America, but he records all this before he goes away, so I'll make sure I thank him. Welcome to our service this morning. I, I have a couple of notices, well, four to be exact. Right, this evening at six o'clock, there is a commemoration service here at Trinity Church for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. It, this service is open to anybody who wants to come along and commemorate her life and her service. So please do come along. On the 8th of October in Trinity Centre, there is a poems and puddings evening. Now anybody who has attended these in the past will know that it is a fantastic night. It's good fun, you get plenty of puddings to eat, and it really is worth coming along. So it's on Saturday the 8th of October in Trinity Centre. So please, I encourage you to come along. I'm going, it's great. Sandra organises it. And it, we do it for a charity. Which charity? Macular Society. Society this year. So please do come along, it's a good night. Um, we're reminding people about the shoebox appeal. There's a notice board at the back with information on it. This year we're, we're going with an organisation called Team For You. They are brilliant. They came and gave a, a presentation. The filled boxes will need to be returned by the beginning of November. So if you would like a box or want to create your own box, that's fine. But is there some leaflets? Right, there's some leaflets. Sandra's got some leaflets and the boxes are in the back. So if you would like to do a box, and please, I encourage you to do it. If you don't want to do one on your own, team up with somebody else, and then you can do it together. But yeah, they need to be returned by the beginning of November. So you've got plenty of time. And finally, you'll be pleased to hear, there's a Harvest Festival service here on the 2nd of October. So... Uh, are we bringing things for the food bank? Think, so, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So it's tinned goods, dried goods, things that we can then donate to the food bank in Osset. Okay. <laughs> Andrew says a cake for the vicar would be nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's on the 2nd of October. So if you're going to bring a, a donation, please bring something that's suitable to pass on to the food bank. Thank you. So we're now going to sing our opening hymn. Hey, I'm getting it right. So please stand as we sing All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Please sit down for our prayers, our prayers of penitence. As we bring to mind the things this week that we've done that maybe we shouldn't have done, and the things that we didn't do that we should have done. As children of a loving Heavenly Father, let us ask his forgiveness, for he is gentle and full of compassion. May your loving mercy come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word is a lantern to, at my feet and a light to my path. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O oh, let your mercy come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to stand and sing our praise and worship songs, beginning with All Heaven Declares.
a collect for today. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit down for our reading. The reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Julia. Good morning. Oh, it's been a strange week. It has. Poems and puddings. I love the idea of poems and puddings. I wonder if I can recite some Pam airs. <laughs> Sally's laughing because we had a we had a joke on holiday about Pam airs. I kept reciting Pam airs, but in the voice of Pam airs. So I might have to resurrect Pam airs. I might look forward to that. Um, this morning on your way, and I, I hope you've been given, um, it's, 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 it's today's readings, just with a few pointers on it. If, is anybody, has everybody got eyes? Can everybody see one? Yeah? Good. It's just, <laughs> I, I must admit, it, I didn't get a chance to do my sermon while Friday, I'm making excuses up here. And um, it was one of them that came to me, um, but I just thought it needed a little bit more explanation. This just sort of breaks it up. And I'm actually going to go through it verse for verse this morning. So here it goes. Now, I want you to, for a moment, imagine that you're a Martian. You fly your flying saucer to a little blue planet called Earth. This is hypothetical. And you come and you watch British television for the first time. And I wondered what you would think if you were a Martian and you saw British television for the first time. For me, I would think you would, that you would think that the British TV today, or the British in particular, is off obsessed with before and after stories. Sally loves to watch home improvement TV programmes showing shabby homes brought to life after a few years and hundreds of thousands of pounds. The before, the shabby, the beautiful, the after. I watch a programme of someone's back garden being created from this. Again, this is you. Sally watches far too much television. I watch a programme of someone's back garden being created from an overgrown jungle, a little bit like ours were at Fernley Drive when we first came, with some plastic chairs and a rusty old barbecue. To a few months later, it's transformed into this incredible, wonderful <coughs> garden for those well being moments that we all long for. Again, the before and the after. Or a bunch of celebrities who go on a pilgrim together who actually don't particularly like each other. They walk 250 miles over two weeks, then decide that they all have respect for each other's 
beliefs and pretend that they've had some form of respect for each other and possibly a little bit of fun on the way. Again, a before and after. And there's actually thousands of TV programmes, I suspect, um, similar with these before and after messages. The message is clear. You can improve your life. You can improve yourself. You can change your life. Try hard enough, get some help and turn over a new leaf. Before and after. The Christian faith proclaims a before and after story for people like us. But the Bible version is very different. Paul tells us in his first verse today, a human being without Christ is dead, not in need of improvement. Turning over a new leaf will help solve that long-term problem. After the service today, they're not here this morning, but we're going to baptise Aidan. They've been coming to church for um, since we, way before Christmas. And uh, baptism, I find, is a very incredible example of God's before and after. Aidan will be baptised He's a love baby, but after his baptism, he becomes a member of our church family, as I hope we, we all are. So before... Aidan's just a child, but after is part of God's incredible family. He's actually part of God's family anyway, but we're just welcoming him into God's family this morning. And, and yesterday I married Lewis and Samantha right here. Before, there were just a couple who lived together, as most people do before they get married these days. But they wanted to get married in church and promise their vows and declarations for each other before God. So today I pray their marriage as the father is at the centre of their love for each other. So before they're a couple living together, they come and do the declarations and vows before God. And now I pray that God is involved in their marriage again, a before and after. Today's passage is really very connected to the prayer Paul is praying from Ephesians 1.15, which, which I mentioned last week. A prayer for understanding what God has done for the Ephesians. They were dead, but now they are alive. And this is all part of knowing the hope the inheritance power, again, I talked about inheritance last week, and the power that God has given them. Paul takes us here to the depths of despair so he can take us to the heights of heaven. And this is a biblical before and after story, if you like. So today's message comes in, in two parts. The before, and secondly, what you are, what we become, the after. So verse 1, it's got a, it says dead on top of verse 1 there, gosh. Paul says, before God got hold of you, you were dead, depraved, disobedient, and doomed. Verse 1 tells us, you were dead. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. You followed ways of the world, says Paul. Your sins were the fruits of dead life. You might have had an healthy body. You might have had a lively mind. You might perhaps have had a sparkling personality, similar to my own. But you were spiritually dead. You were heading for an eternal death. Verse 2 tells of, as of disobedience, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now and at work in those who are disobedient. How we followed ways of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. That was a Jewish way of referring to the devil or to Satan. You followed him. Just like Adam and Eve followed the promptings, so did you. This is Paul talking to the Ephesians. I'm not telling you guys, that's, this is you this morning. This is Paul talking to the Ephesians or writing his letter to the Ephesians. You probably didn't even realise because like so many people in today's fast culture, and this does go for us, people tend to just go along with the status quo. And it may be that they don't do anything evil or anything bad, but they choose to listen to the ways of the world as opposed to listening to God's way and accepting God's ways. You choose your own way over God's way. You don't even realise that you were disobedient to God. Verse 3 tells us you were depraved. All of us lived among them at once, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desire and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, following the appetites of a sinful nature. Here in verse 3, Paul changes the, the you to the us. 
So it becomes all of us. Not only had the most pagan Ephesian readers lived to please their bodily appetites, so had Paul and all others who had a religious upbringing. Paul is telling us before accepting Christ, we were all doomed. We were, we were by nature objects of wrath. John Piper defines God, God's wrath as God's settled anger towards sin expressed in the repayment of suitable vengeance on the guilty sinner. Because we reveled in our life apart from God, we were under God's terrible wrath and there was nothing we could do about it. For example, if you take a pig out of a pigsty and you bathe him and you scrub him and you put nice perfume over your pig and you dress the pig in a suit and tie, again, this is hypothetical, you don't change a thing because at the end of the day, a pig is still a pig. The point is the pig is still going to head for the nearest and smelliest pile of mud it can find no matter how nice it looks. You see, a nature is a pig. What the pig's is, is, pig needs is a new nature. So up to, I hope you're getting wind of this. I've lost myself, I think. <laughs> so up to now, everything looks pretty bleak. Every very little sign of any hope. The before, this is before we have God in our life. The words dead, disobedient, depraved, and doomed. It's not until we reach verse 4 and the appearance of a humble word packed full of explosive power which brings us to the second part of the reading. Verse 410, what we are, or as I've put it, the after. Because once we've accepted Christ, God loves us back. Verse 4 to 6 says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. God's great love and rich mercy has made us alive with Christ. Grace is God's free release of a guilty man or woman. Mercy is God's compassion to one who is in desperate need and with no claim to favourable treatment. We could say God's heart goes out to a dead sinner and raises him to life or her to life. We have to remember Jesus began his ministry preaching, teaching and healing. He loved the weak, the sick and those destroyed by the world. He became famous for who he ate with tax collectors, fishermen, prostitutes, the poor, the unclean. And then sitting at a table he hears his critics, who is this man that eats with such terrible people? And Jesus says, it's not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick, adding, I came for sinners. When Jesus says, I came for the sick, I think, yeah, I'm sick. Heal me. I've got lots of problems. When Jesus says, I came for sinners, it's shocking. Because I understand my brokenness and accept the idea that I am a sinner. We might respond to Jesus, I thought you came for me. I'm not the problem, the disease is. However, Jesus says, come to the table, you who are in need of grace. Grace, grace is, we're going to sing actually that, that amazing song, Amazing Grace, uh, shortly. But grace is my favourite doctrine. But I've got to keep reminding myself of the grace that God so freely gives us. Grace is a funny one. Grace is something I feel I need to deserve. Yet we're given it simply by doing right in the acceptance of Jesus as Lord and King. But actually that leaves me feeling quite inadequate. Mainly because I know I'm a sinner and I know how that affects me. I want to walk into God's kingdom standing tall, crowds cheering and saying, Andrew, you deserve to be here all on your own. I'm happy to speak of the grace of God for others, but in my own heart, I actually wonder if I really deserve that. But the image of Jesus with friends at tables, on boats, in courts, spread on a cross, and alive in the garden actually shakes me to my knees as I see his goodness and my own weakness. When I read Ephesians 2, I come to this conclusion that I need grace. The way of Jesus is the way. It's the way of most, the most love, the greatest hope. It's the best life. We cannot live our best lives now unless we have God's grace. In a sense, we're reunited with Jesus 
because he's in heaven. So we are seated there with him and in him. Seated, it's the past tense because it's as certain as, as it had already happened. We're already there with him. Yeah, we're here, but our place is there. Just as Christ had been resurrected and ascended in his ruling, just as certain as our resurrection and our eternal dwelling and rule with Christ. You know, God has made us, this is every one of us here, God has made us crowns or jewels of his grace. Verse 7 reads, In order that in coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Because there's a future aspect to our salvation. In the coming ages, God will show us even more of his grace. Paul seems to be saying here that God wants to make a show, a display of his grace towards us. A lady, when asked, where are your jewels, looks at her two children. She points to them and she says, there, they're my two jewels. And that's what we are to God. God will show us off all the spiritual powers and authority. He wants to show us off to the angels. And he'll point to them, he'll point back to us and say, they're my jewels, you're God's jewels. And they'll be glorified for what he did in us. God has made us receivers of this incredible, wonderful gift. And what a gift. Verse 8, for it is by the grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's a gift of God. It wouldn't be wrong to say that the grace and the faith and all of it come from God. But what Paul is saying here is the gift is salvation by grace through faith. We only get salvation through faith. And you can't buy a gift from a giver because if you buy it, then it can't be a gift. So it's given to us freely. The best explanation is that this refers to the whole plan and process of salvation by grace through faith. Salvation by grace through faith is not from ourselves, but is a gift from God, not of our works. The nature of grace is echoed. This whole plan and process of salvation comes from God as a gift. It's not from ourselves as a result of works that we do or the good things that we've done or will do. When I say I wonder if I deserve it or not is irrelevant because God gives it to me anyway. Because I accept Jesus as my Lord. I recently met a man who um, he said he wouldn't. Dress, I get this all the time, actually. He said he wouldn't dream of setting a foot in church. It were outside on, on Church Street, and I asked him why. And this guy said he said it's because I'm, I've been so bad. I've been so bad. I can't possibly set a foot in that church. And I said, if anyone, including me, is in that church because they think they're good, they are so terribly wrong. Church is for people who know they desperately need the grace of God in Christ. God's grace is a gift for empty-handed people like me. I hope the man understood that. I'm not sure that he did. God has made us workers in his kingdom. The last verse is 9 and 10. Not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You know, we are loved, loved back to life, seated with Christ, crowns of grace, recipients of the most amazing gift. But we can't just sit back, says Paul. We were formed and created for the purpose of doing good works. Works are never the way to salvation, but they are the consequence of salvation and they're the evidence of salvation. Brothers and sisters, I want you to hear me when, we say, when I say we are saved. We are saved. You were dead, but now you are alive. This is a before and after story. Let me ask you, are you living in the before or are you living in the after? Because despite my, my thoughts about myself and a sinful nature, and it's no major don't get me wrong it's just little silly things that we all do but I believe I am the after because I've accepted Jesus Christ and even though I struggle that I don't possibly accept grace I know that God freely gives me that grace so are you the before or are you after chances are that today most of us are glad to consider ourselves 
in the after part. If so, just for a moment, where would you be today if you had not come to know Jesus Christ? For each of, us, our, each of us, our journey is different. But remembering this before and after story, or this without Christ or with Christ story, will do some crucial things for us. Whenever we're tempted to despair, we remember this incredible reading of Ephesians. Remembering our own before and after story, it helps to see the incredible significance of our life. God gives us a sense of grateful joy. It inspires us to worship and strengthens us in our daily struggles, which we all have. It may even motivate us to get out there and win our dead, disobedient, depraved and otherwise doomed friends. And I pray that it does all of that and more. We are after people. There's a lot of people out there that are before people, but it's up to us to go out and make that difference. Show what a difference God will make to all our lives. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, I praise your wonderful grace that made us alive in Christ. When we were dead in trespasses and sins and without hope in the world. Thank you, Father, for Jesus and thank you for loving us so much that you sent him to give us new life through faith in him. I pray that your spirit will more and more open our understanding to this incredible gift that you so freely give. Thank you, Father, for your free gift of salvation, even when we think we're not worthy to receive such a gift. Father, I'm astonished at the abounding and overflowing riches of your amazing grace, which for so long I've taken for granted. Thank you that I will be one of many countless voices that will be singing in thanksgiving for your amazing grace and unconditional love for me, a sinner saved by your grace. So Father, remind us that, great, that the grace you lovingly give us is free. Make us bold in proclaiming the saving blood of Jesus to those that are born dead in their sins and use us, your people here in Osset and Gawthorpe to further your plans and your purpose. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, I have to say that blew me away, Andrew. Thank you. I'm in the after bit. If it wasn't for God's grace, I wouldn't be here where I am now. And it's God's grace that's got me through what I've been through in the last 18 months. But it's there for everybody, not just people who are going through bad times in their life, but just for everybody. And what a lovely way of looking at it, Andrew, the before and the after. So... That wonderful grace that we've all got, we don't have to work for, it comes free gratis. And it comes through faith. So let us all stand and declare our faith in God. We say together, we believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who changes our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit for our prayers. Thank you, God, for the grace that you have given to us, your people. And we thank you for the grace that you gave to our Queen Elizabeth in her exceptional reign, her deep affection for her people, her lifelong desire to serve the common good, her humility and grace. 
hard work and dedication, but most of all, that she was your child, loved by you. We thank you, living Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the King and members of the royal family as they mourn the loss of a mother and grandmother, as well as a friend and monarch, and as they begin to take on new responsibilities, may they know the riches of your grace. In the royal palaces, crown them with your loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with our national leaders, especially the new prime minister and the new cabinet, at this time of uncertainty and change. In the corridors of power, crown them with your heavenly wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the Queen's people in nation and commonwealth as they mourn a monarch and peacemaker and rejoice in the cultural diversities celebrated under her reign, in the four corners of her realm, crown us with peace and goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the hidden folk throughout the world who are struggling to make peace, longing for healing, grieving the loss of someone they love, and especially we pray for a just peace between Ukraine and Russia. In a moment of quiet, we remember them now. In pain and grief, Crown the nations of the earth with the light of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving the life of Elizabeth, your servant and our queen, that she may rest from her labours and rejoice in the one whom she worshipped as King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was crowned not with gold, but with thorns, and whose blood was shed to give life to the world, crown us with your love and grace that we may serve one another with humility and joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Maria. Brothers and sisters, just before um, I do peace and we do communion, um, I've not been very well the last few days, and I've not got COVID, I've done a COVID test, but when I distribute the elements, I'm just going to put my mask on. I just didn't want you to be alarmed by, by that. I don't think it's fair, but I will make sure everything's gelled and safe. Um, but I am going to put my mask on. So you don't have to see my beautiful face. Let's stand for the peace. God is love and those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another. We're going to sing that incredible song, Amazing Grace.
generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. At your table we present the, the money, the symbol of the work you have given us to do. So Lord, allow us to use that money in the service of your world to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is in right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and the blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He brought the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence and sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast in your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. to share in the body of Christ though we are many we are one body because we all share in one bread Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world blessed are those who are called to his supper Lord I am not worthy to receive you but only say the word and I shall be healed brothers and sisters everybody is welcome to the Lord's table um, if you just like a blessing, just keep your arms down by your side and I'll freely give you a blessing.
I just want to thank and praise God for the grace that he so freely gives every one of us. The before and the after. We are after people. Those that God so freely gives his grace to just by accepting Jesus by Lord and Master. How amazing is that? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. And that goes for every one of us this morning. Here is Jesus' people. And Lord, we just thank you for that free grace that you give us. Those that continue to sin, but Lord, you still turned a blind eye. So Lord, we praise you. Praise you with everything that we have this morning. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of the bread, and one in joy and simplicity of the art. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite Ken and his team up. Let's see what we've been doing today. Okay, quick notice first. It's Church of England, of course. For, for various reasons, we're not able to do Trinity families this afternoon, so we won't be meeting. But next week, sorry, next month, on the 16th, we will be meeting, and we've had a very special invitation. No, not to Buckingham Palace. Uh, we've been invited to Andrew's house to do it, so we'll be meeting there for Trinity families. And we'll some tea as well. So you can have a nosy... Oh, look, he's got one of those, you see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've been thinking about the workmanship of God today and how he made us and how he uses us. And uh, so we've, had, we've been making Lego things this morning and uh, singing songs and uh, hearing about how Jesus used his and called his disciples. So we thought we would sing If I Were a Butterfly, as we are wonderfully made by God. Uh, so, um, Marion, would you like to come and do the actions for us? If you go over there and I'll tell them. Oh, you're going to tell them what the actions are first. Yeah, you're telling them. Right. Go for it. Okay, if I were a butterfly, you need to make a butterfly. I thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in a tree, I thank you, Lord, that I could sing. If I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. For you gave me a heart. You gave me a smile, you gave me Jesus, and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. We've got our helpers over here. Right. Okay, here we go. So let's all give it a go. Ready? If I were a butterfly, I'd thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in a tree, I'd thank you, Lord, that I could sing. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. He gave me a heart. Oh, you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile You gave me Jesus and you made me your child And I just thank you, Father, for making me me If I were an elephant, I'd thank you, Lord, by raising my trunk And if I were a kangaroo, you know, I'd hop right up to you and if I were an octopus, I'd thank you, Lord, for my fine looks But I just thank you, Father, for making me me if I were an elephant, I'd thank you, Lord, by raising my trunk. And if I were a kangaroo, you know I'd hop right up to you. And if I were an octopus, I'd thank you, Lord, for my fine looks. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. 
war You gave me a heart and you gave me a smile You gave me Jesus and you made me your child And I just thank you, Father, for making me me And if I were a wiggly worm, I'd thank you, Lord, that I could squirm And if I were a crocodile, I'd thank you, Lord, for my big smile And if I were a fuzzy wuzzy bear Thank you, Lord, for my fuzzy wuzzy hair. <laughs> okay, here we go. That's why, that's why I, I, I was saying to them in there that once a time I had lots of hair, muff chops down here, hair that rolled down the front, around the back, and it's all gone. Oh, never mind. If I were a wiggly worm, I'd thank you, Lord, that I could squirm. And if I were a crocodile, I'd thank you, Lord, for my big smile. And if I were a fussy wussy bear, I'd thank you, Lord, for my fussy wussy hair. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. For you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me me. Oh, now next week I'm on a camp with 60 scouts. Isn't that lovely? So I'll be doing all this kind of thing with them. But, uh, but Nick will be here, I hope. And uh, Sunday Club is still on next week. So great stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Ken and this team. They do an absolutely incredible job and some amazing work with children. They really do. Thank you. So before our blessing, we're going to sing our final hymn this morning, which is Praise My Soul, the King of Heavens. Let's This is the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be upon you and those you love today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stay and join us for tea and refreshments.